everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint a cold winter's night. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm acrylic artist Joni Young and today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this pretty winter landscape. I'm going to break it down into easy steps for you guys so all levels can follow along. It's definitely beginner friendly. I'll post all the colors and brushes I'm using in the description box below so just scroll on down and you'll see everything listed there. So in this painting you guys are going to learn how to shadow and highlight create these mountains and these trees and this beautiful reflection in the water. So I'm going to break it down into the steps so that all of you can follow along and create your very own winter painting. I'm going to be using just a few different brushes. Um, I want to show you guys that by only using two or three brushes you can create so much in a painting from memory. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here are all the colors we're going to be using today and if you don't have uh, neon pink or neon yellow, you can use any pink or yellow you like. We've got black, my favorite whole bean hot pink, and neon yellow. We've got turquoise, my favorite phthalo blue, and the next one is light ultramarine blue. If you don't have this shade, you just take regular ultramarine or cobalt blue and mix it with titanium white. So this is all dry. It's painting and uh, that I've recycled. I just covered it with some white acrylic gesso. Now this painting is inspired by a photograph I took a long time ago of the Columbia River uh, in Golden, BC. So I'm just going to squeeze out a small amount of each color. Because it's a smaller canvas that we're using we don't need a whole lot of paint and this is heavy duty or heavy bodied uh, acrylic paint um, so a little bit goes a long way and you don't need to use heavy bodied acrylic so if you're at home right now wanting to paint this with me and you don't have heavy bodied acrylics that's okay use whatever you have on hand it will work just fine I'm just gonna get everything laid out here and ready to go I'm using a medium size flat brush and uh, sorry there's no number on the brush so it's just uh, small to medium and I'm gonna take a little bit of the yellow with a white and come in with a few lines diagonally and I'm going to leave spaces in between. I'll do three or four of these. So here's our third one. This one's going to be a little bit longer and then our fourth right down here. Now I may have brought this one down just a little bit too low and I might cover part of that up later on with uh, the mountain but that's okay. So really easy so far. We just got four light yellow lines that go diagonally. Now with the same paint in the brush and taking a little bit of that pink, mixing it with that yellow and the white to create a beautiful uh, fuzzy peachy color. Taking a bit of water on just the tip of my brush, I'm going to apply the paint on either side and around wherever I have those yellow lines. Just pulling around carefully, slightly blending it into a bit of the yellow, but don't cover all of the yellow up. So I'm just picking up some more of that paint because I've run out and I'm going to start scumbling around, wiggling my brush. And I apply whatever colors I'm using in the sky and the reflection below for the water. Again, leaving the yellow in the middle of that reflection. And I push the paint into a nice line, a ridge on the end of my brush, and I pull and flick in short little brush strokes up and down. I'll just scumble a little bit more of that around there. Okay, let's wash out our brush now. 
it's very important to wash your brushes out in between use. I've um, thrown away many brushes in the past from forgetting to wash out that acrylic paint. Okay, so now with a clean dry brush, using that same flat one, I'm going to take some of that light ultramarine blue, a little bit of titanium white, and just start pulling around in around between those yellow lines, getting as close as I can to that peachy pink color, and you can definitely go over it a little bit. That will make another shade um, that will look really, really pretty. So when you layer or mix that light blue over the pink, you'll get a really pretty violety color. So flicking and pulling lightly on an angle. And then scumbling a little bit in between closest to where the mountains are going to be. I'm just pulling in a little bit of white right here to soften it up. Keep in mind acrylic paint dries darker. Just got to adjust my canvas a little bit here. I'm waiting for my brand new easel to come in. So until then, I'm kind of improvising and, and placing whatever I can behind this canvas to steady it. Okay, so let's take a bit more of that light ultramarine blue, a little bit of white, and keep adding it in between our pretty sunset streaks. Don't be afraid to pick up a little bit of water in between just to help you blend that out of your brush. You just don't want to pick too much water up um, in case it starts dripping. You definitely have too much on your brush if that's happening. Okay, now I'm going to pull in some turquoise, white, and light ultramarine blue. I'm going to start scumbling up in the left corner here not covering up all of that blue. I just want to have little pockets of turquoise peeking through of that blue. We're painting such a cold scene with cool colors. It's so nice to pull in some warm tones to balance that out. Wash off our brush again, make sure it's the shape of it's nice and those bristles are laying flat. Dry it off and let's pick up some white and some pink. Mix the two together. It's a really beautiful bubblegum shade of pink. We're going to just tap lightly, partially on the orange and partially on the blue and you can see it's creating a really lovely violet color. And then I'm applying it much more thick, thickly right here. You can almost see it. It's really, really thick because when it dries, I want it to stay that bright neon pink color. And then I'm going to take some white where I want it, have it really, really light and softer looking. So more of a pastel tone in here. So just by how you hold the brush, you're able to sneak it in where you have a smaller space and you don't have much room. You can just pull it sideways, creating a little line in between where you need to, or turn it the full width around and fill in thicker spaces. But if you have a liner brush that you feel more comfortable using to fill in those tighter spaces, you can go ahead and do that. I just like to show you guys that using one brush can take you so far. So yeah, I've created almost this whole sky just using one brush. I'm gonna wash that off again. Now let's see, let's take some of this light blue a bit more turquoise, a bit more white. I haven't blended it. 
you can see each color on the end of my brush. Try to zoom in here for you guys. Adjust the light a little bit there, or the focus. Okay, just wanna make sure that I'm focusing well on this canvas. And I'm gonna start dusting, brushing back and forth lightly. I'm gonna start working on the foreground. This is the snow and the ice right on top of the river. And the reason why I didn't blend it all on the palette is because I want it to be more of an organic way of painting. So I want the all the colors to kind of fall and blend sort of on their own, wherever they fall. And I like more of a natural process like that. And it's a easy way of getting lots of different tones and shades in a painting rather than making one color and then coming in with another color. You can just kind of do it all at once and save yourself some time by doing it like this. So just take a scoop of each color and just start pulling back and forth. Letting those colors fall where they do. And if you'd like to add more turquoise than I have, or more blue than I have, uh, it won't wreck the painting. Um, it's totally up to you. As long as you use all these colors, you'll still get that same effect, and you'll still be happy with your painting. So by all means, do your own thing with this painting, and use more or less color. It's all up to you. I'm just here to guide you guys along. Um, to help you create a piece that you're happy with. Some people like more color and, and some people um, find it a little bit um, calmer to look at a painting that's uh, got less color in it. And I'm different all the time. I mean, I love, I definitely love working with color and painting with color, but I don't always want to see bright neon paintings on the wall. And this one's kind of in between that. It's got those moodier, darker tones and softer tones, but then it's also got that pop of color, which is really nice. I've got some phthalo blue now, some black, just a little bit of black though. And I'm using that same brush and I'm just going up and down, creating a little suggestion of a mountain range back there in the distance. And then I'm gonna pull across the bottom. And I'm taking some of the ultramarine blue and I'm gonna mix that up and start coming in with some shadows and different angles on these mountains so that we get instant peaks and ranges and hills. So turn your brush different directions as you're painting and diagonally. That's kind of the trick when you're painting mountains, especially one that's got a lot of peaks and ridges on it and snow. You want to pull to the left, pull to the right, wiggle a little bit, that helps to create all of that. Now there's another one that comes right in front of it. It's softer looking. And the one way up there in the distance is a real rocky mountain with the snow caps on it. Now using the same brush, same paint, I'm turning it sideways and pulling and tapping the brush just to get all these little lines that look like an instant forest. Isn't that easy? So you don't have to do one little tree at a time. You can just tap and push and you've got all these trees done so quickly. This 
this painting, this tutorial is real time. I haven't sped it up at all for you guys. I promised that I was gonna <laughs> try to slow down my tutorials for you. It's hard for me because I've always been a fast painter. Um, so I'm doing my best to slow this down for you all. And let me know what you think in the comments below if you enjoy a slower one, a longer tutorial. I think this one is gonna be about an hour. Now, if it's something that you guys are, are liking and you're re requesting it, then I will continue to make longer tutorials for you. Now with a clean brush, same brush, I'm taking neon yellow and white, and I'm just pulling in a little bit more right here that got a little bit lost when I added that mountain down there. And I kind of thought that was gonna happen from the beginning because I took it down a little bit too low. And then I'm gonna take straight neon pink and just line the top of these mountains and look at what that does. It just kind of instantly makes them have a glow to them. I never ever used to work with neon paints. And then I slowly started adding them into the classes that I was teaching and uh, students really loved it. It's just really fun. And it's a great way to get that nice bold pop of color in a painting. And it's great to prime your canvases with them too. I know a lot of people and myself enjoy priming a canvas with bright red, neon orange, whatever color you want. Okay, so I've got the same brush, light ultramarine blue, some white, no water on my brush, and now watch how I'm holding this brush and I'm barely touching the canvas. You can definitely use a palette knife if you prefer using a palette knife. But if you're just beginning and you don't have a palette knife and maybe you've just got one or two brushes, well, there you go. That's all you need to do. Just lightly drag your brush and wiggle a little bit. Okay, so now with a clean brush, I'm taking some black and some of that phthalo blue. Just a little bit of black. Remember, black goes a long way. You only need a tiny bit of it. I'm going to use the same technique and I'm going to bring in some shadows now. So we've got our mid-tone that we started out with in the beginning. We've got some highlights but not too bright, obviously, because it's uh, the sun is setting and it's not gonna be that bright. Um, and we've got our shadows now. And I'll just add a little bit. I'll align this mountain range right back here, off to the right. Now I'm going to take some phthalo and some neon pink. So I'll show you guys. I'm going to slightly mix it, put it on the end of my brush, create a violet color. If you have a purple color that you'd like to use in a tube already, go ahead. But I've got these colors out and I know I can make that. So I'd rather make my own colors. It's a lot more fun creating your own shade. And I'm going to turn my brush sideways and cut in little lines for trees and dust back and forth just for just because I think it's a pretty color to put back there. So I'm just enhancing the forest with a shade of purple. Okay. So phthalo blue and neon pink again. And like I said, you know, if you don't have neon colors, that's okay. Use whatever pink you have on hand. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little line down here under this forest. This is where the bank is falling. It's kind of on a slant, but to us it just looks like a little line. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. And then with a clean brush, a little ultramarine blue right above the mountain on the right side and a little bit in between here. I just want some more of a shadow and a little bit on the top left for some more shadow. This also will help with the depth as well just because it's a little bit darker up there. It helps draw our eye into the center of the painting. 
Okay, now it's time to come in with our shadows in the foreground. I'm going to use light ultramarine blue and start to pull in wherever I want to have a little bit more shadows falling. Now there's going to be a little bush right there and a shadow under it. So I'm like kind of just painting a little oval on a slant there on the bottom right. And then a few little lines that go on a slant as well because it's a bank and it's um, slanted. So you want to have little diagonal lines that go down. You don't need to paint as many as I have or you can paint more if you like. It really won't make a difference how many trees you have in this painting but wherever you have some trees you want to have a few shadows that fall below them for it to make sense and and it just helps make the painting look more interesting. I love light and shadow in a painting. And if you just don't have any light and shadow in a painting you've just got a really flat painting. So you want to make sure to think about all those things when taking a photo as well. If you take a photo to use as a reference for your for your landscapes, make sure that it's interesting the, the time of day uh, where there's a lot of shadow going on. If it's really, really sunny outside and there's not many shadows at all, that's not going to make for a good piece of art. Okay, so now you can see I'm going to, here, I'm going to try and focus this for you guys. Give me a second here. I've got my mini fan brush. It's a really nice little brush to use. It's very, very handy. I'm going to pull in, load my brush with black and phthalo blue. I want to make sure I've got enough paint on my brush to work with. And what I'm going to do is come in with the trees, detail them a bit more, make some that are more in the foreground. So that was the background forest we were working on. And it's going to be lighter in color. So this closest to us, we're going to see better and it's going to be darker. It's going to stand out more and be more of a contrast and pop out against that beautiful sky. And I'll dust it around and do little lines, carefully not covering up all that purple though. So you want to balance that out. And then turning my brush sideways, I'll pull and flick to indicate little trees and tree trunks back there. So I'm just going to continue to do this until we get to the right side. Now the right side is where the forest is going to come around closer to us. It kind of pulls around. It curves towards us and there's a very nice path that you can walk along and people in the winter will cross country ski, they'll snowshoe. It's really, really pretty. You can walk for miles and miles. So I'm using my brush to create some little, there's gonna be little posts here and what used to be a fence, it's kind of just a few um, fence posts left that I'll add in, in a minute, you'll see. And I'm gonna just pull and flick. I don't have any water on my brush lightly pulling and flicking to start building up this forest here in the foreground. Now once I'm done you doing this, I'm just kind of laying it out right now and then I'm going to come in with a finer detailed brush and create these tree trunks and all the little branches. Now there's a few trees that are going to be the tallest right over here on the right, three or four of them.
And those are the main uh, trees that you want to focus on for that shadow below that's on a slant down that bank. And I'm going to start coming in very carefully. Right around where the snow is melted and you can see the reflection in the water. And then it goes further back there and because it's farther away it's just just a little suggestion so a few little wiggly lines that go way back there and I'm just going to continue to create this shadow this beautiful contrast and then flick down very lightly lining my brush up pulling and flicking gently for the reflection of those trees careful not to paint over and cover up too much of that uh, pink orange and yellow that we've got now there's just a little bit going on over here too so I'm just going to pull sweeping little lines side to side now so far we've done all of this using only two brushes and there's only one more brush that we're going to add to this and that's the liner brush so you can create this entire landscape today using only three brushes Okay, I'm zooming in on this. I really want you guys to see how all the bristles are spreading apart into separating into little chunks like that. I always tell my students it looks like a little rake. You want it to look like that for certain things. It's very helpful when the brush does this, okay? This will help create all those little trees because you want to have the spaces in between them. You don't want it to be a, a full thick chunk of paint so see it can just pull and flick and I'll get so many trees at once rather than doing one at a time I'm just gonna add a little bit more on this left side that's a lot further away so we're not doing we're not focusing too much on that side so i'm using that I'm going back to that flat brush again it's all clean and dry let's take our turquoise white and i'm going to push my brush to get a ridge of paint there on the end i'm just gonna pull across line it up right behind that black paint try really hard not to pull that black paint in there you can take a hair dryer or take a few minutes and let that black dry first before you do this I just need to cover up those sunset colors they don't need to be there and then I'm going to go in between these shadows and just add little dabs of this wherever I feel like I need to break up the blue and that bit of black and now I'm going to switch over to more of that light ultramarine blue and start adding more shadows down here on the bottom left And then bring it over to the bottom right and in between those shadows. I 
And now I'm going to start coming in with these little, maybe they're tree stumps, old tree stumps. And then, like I said earlier, there is an old broken down fence here with a few posts still standing. And I'm just going to turn my brush sideways and kind of just pull, create that line. And then I pick up a bit of white and light ultramarine blue on the corner of my brush and just tap on the top to make it look like there's some snow on it. I think the turquoise and the light ultramarine blue are my favorite combination for painting winter shadows. It's just that cool minty color and that cool, almost, the light ultramarine blue is almost uh, takes on a purple tone. And it's kind of funny, it depends on what colors it's being um, added or what other, whatever is going on in the painting, what other colors are there. Colors kind of play on each other. And I really think this this blue is is uh, playing on this light peach, and it's very complementary. All these colors are. I love to use complementary colors in paintings. I don't always plan on it. It kind of just ends up happening on its own when I'm creating a piece. Okay, I've cleaned my flat brush, dried it off, and I'm going to pick up some of that neon pink. Add some more color to this reflection very carefully. I want to make sure that my black paint is fairly dry enough. I'm working in a really warm studio today, so my paint is drying fast, but you might want to double check yours before doing this or you're going to have a big muddy mess and you'll be really upset. But acrylic paint is very easy to cover up and it dries quickly. So if you do do this and you end up having too much black in your reflection, you can easily paint over. Start with a white base first though, dry it off and then go from there. So I'm just taking pink, yellow and adding that in. There's a little bit of tiny spots here where the water is is showing and I'm adding a bit of those colors there as well. Pull and flick. And then just a little bit on this one back here. And it's a dry brush I'm using. So I'm going to have a playlist link below in the description. Make sure you guys see that, click on it, and you can watch and learn all of my winter tutorials. I've got some hand-painted DIY make-your-own-Christmas ornaments, and that's uh, such a popular one this time of year. Um, it's December 1st today, and everyone's getting ready for Christmas and in the Christmas spirit. Okay, I'm going to come in with some more shadow using black and pink. Making sure there's no white or light ultramarine blue in my brush at all. I'm just going to define the shadow a bit more. My darkest shadows. I'm going to turn my brush over this way and then pull and flick up carefully just on a bit of a slant. So a little bit more right around here need that to show up a bit more. What a nice contrast down here. Make this a little bit rounded and then come in 
with these fence posts. So they get shorter and shorter on an angle and head up there to where there is a path that we can't really see, but this kind of lets us, it's kind of inviting. It lets you know that it's there and makes you kind of wonder where it leads. Now I just need to come in here a little bit more. There's a few little ripples of snow and where the ice is kind of building up and kind of has like a ripply look to it. So I just dusted over a little bit of black and blue. And I'm going to scumble in some bushes and shadow here. going to tap in a little bit of phthalo back here and pull a few lines in the mountain just for a little bit more color. Okay, here's the third and final brush we're going to be using today. It's a medium size to long liner brush and I'm going to get it wet first, which I didn't show but I did. And I'm going to take some of that neon yellow and just a little bit, yeah, right out of the tube. So a little bit right on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to place some right back behind those tree trunks just because I need this to look like more of a neon orange color. So I can make that color by adding that yellow over top of the pink. And I'm going to take some more and add a little bit in right in the middle of that reflection. And then I'm going to pull some tree trunks carefully in with this brush as well. And I'm just using straight black for this and just a little bit of water. And I'm also going to add a little bit of a shadow at the base of each of these posts and tree trunks. Clean up some lines a bit in the back wherever I need to. a little bit more here and then I'm going to begin adding the detail all the little individual branches to these trees so light little flicks barely touching the canvas is what you want to be doing with this little liner brush now you want to have a really really fine liner brush for this the smallest one you have with the least amount of hairs would be work the best okay and you want to have equal amounts of paint and water for the littlest branches. Now for the main tree trunk itself I'm using straight black paint but for everything else I'm picking up a little bit of water. Now we're going to do a few right down here pulling and flicking short little brush strokes And this is real time. I just paint really fast, but it just shows you that you don't need to really take a long time with every single little branch. You can just do a whole bunch, little flicks, little lines, one after the other. And in fact, your trees will look more realistic if you do this. They'll be a little bit more carefree and natural looking rather than if you're really concentrating so much and trying really hard to get every single little branch just right that's when painters and students get the most frustrated you literally just have to go with the flow 
and trust in yourself and that brush. And the more you paint, the better you'll get and the more comfortable you'll be. Just practice and practice and practice. I paint every day. Um, it keeps me happy. I just love painting. And it keeps me um, um, from getting rusty, you know. You have to keep doing things to, to stay fresh with it. You don't want to take too long of a break. I know if I do, um, then I kind of feel like I'm back at square one. But if I paint every day, I'm learning more and more too. And I'm trying new things. And it helps that I love to paint. So here I am applying like another thick tree trunk. This is a birch tree in here on the side. So I'm just pushing to get that thicker tree trunk. I'm pushing a little bit harder with my brush and I wiggle as I'm pulling and pushing. I'm going to take some more black and define right around this post and then a little bit more shadows at the base. Got a really nice contrast down here at the bottom. I'm really happy with how this is coming together and I hope you guys are finding this fairly easy to follow along. If you have any questions, of course, don't hesitate to comment below and please give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, go ahead and do that. It means so much to me. I'm really happy that my channel has been growing and knowing that you guys are enjoying my videos. Gonna add a little bit more detail back here. Just breaking up those shadows and highlights, defining them a little bit more, getting a nice balance of color in there. Using black for the darkest shadows and contrast in this painting. So as I'm doing these little branches, you can tell, look at my hand, it's kind of shaking. So if you're nervous about painting your trees and you're a bit shaky, it'll work to your advantage. You'll get really neat, natural looking branches. And it really, really helps, like I said before, to have some water in your brush. Just pull a little bit of lines way back here in the distance to indicate maybe some big birch trees back there. And I've got another beautiful winter tutorial coming up for you guys after this one. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. I want you guys to be surprised. Right down here on the bottom left tree or bush, I should say, I just picked up some titanium white and some turquoise and pulled it along, dragged it along the top to indicate some snow that's on top. And it's a little bit of a highlight as well. But remember, you're not going to use straight white for any highlights because it's not the right type of, or time of day. We're just going to keep them cool and muted using blue or turquoise. Okay, and I'm gonna, there's a highway back there and then a snowbank. So there, that's what that little chunk of highlight is or snow back there that you see. There's a highway that goes right above there. And I'm going to come in with a few little lines and wiggles for those snow, for all that snow and 
some glaciers up there. And then pull and drag off to the side and wiggle a little bit. Just got to cover up that one spot that's been really bugging me. There we go. Again, just using the light ultramarine blue and turquoise and a bit of white. I'm just adding the final details of this painting. Now, if you guys are going to try this one, and I hope you do, let me know how it turns out. You can send me a picture of it on Instagram or Facebook. Joni Young Art for both accounts. And with that being said, I want to wish you guys a wonderful day. Happy painting. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video and leave a comment below. I'll see you next time, everybody.